Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Customs. So today we're going to be finishing up our Captain Marvel custom series made from the Prime 1 Green Lantern that I've been converting into Genesis Veil vale for my own personal collection. This is a grail statue for me, so I'm really excited to start finishing this up. Of course, we're running into a little bit of a hiccup here and there because we are in a lockdown and I completely forgot about doing an element to the base I should have done months ago, but I was so focused on working on him and other projects, it slipped in my mind. But we'll go over that real quick now. So the main thing in this video is we're gonna be working on the base. We're gonna be finishing this up because the figure is done and all we have to really do is paint up the base, fix some elements and work on this clear power blast and he's ready to go. So. Uh, what I wanted to do uh, months back, I completely forgot about, was to m fill in these circles or chop these out and then to get little stars and put stars around the base, just like on his chest. So that star that's on his chest, which is kind of the symbol for Captain Marvel, I wanted to put around there. And I completely forgot about doing it. So as of right now, since we're in a lockdown, you got to kind of think of options that you can do if you use something like, you know, an etcher from my friend in Canada who can etch out stars for me. Basically, uh, what I need to do is two things. One, if he's actually back to work and he can etch them, I'll give him a call and I'll see if he could do them for me. And whenever he's done, I can always add these down the line. I could also, you know, I could paint up the clear yellow, get that going, and then I can add the stars and paint up the rest afterwards. So it's not the end of the world. Or two, if he can't do it and stuff, what I could do is I can sculpt my own star. And what I could do is get my needle mold and press it into the needle mold if I have any. Hopefully I do. And then I could pour resin copies in there and make copies that way. So there is always options, but I really would like to have a really perfect etching look to it. But we'll see how things go with that. So basically, once I get that done, we're going to be focusing on the paintwork. And the paintwork is actually fairly simple uh, because I'm going to be using this spaz that clear yellow. Uh, this stuff, uh, you know, Spaztec stuff is really working on amazing, but we'll go over how I'm going to paint the clear stuff. So, well, a few things I need to do right now is uh, go back in here with some more uh, nail polish remover, maybe clean it up just a little bit more so it's not perfectly yellow, uh, greenish looking. So, that's kind of just like, you know, there's just no way about it. I mean, it's fairly clean now, but you still might get a little bit of a green tint some here and there, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. And then uh, once we get the clear on that, we're also going to do the clear on his power blast that I made. And basically the same gold that I did here on this bracelet is going to be on that bracelet, but then it's going to blend into the clear resin uh, yellow for a power blast. And I think if I'm not mistaken, um, Genesis Fail had like a lot of black in his power blasts. So I might do something like that as well, but I might test on the other one that I did that I didn't like the way that came out first, and we'll see how that looks on that one first. So there's also gonna be a little bit of a testing in the video. And then the last step is once I get the stars on here, if you saw my last video or my other video, which I'll link in the description of my File of Veil custom from the Captain Marvel Sideshow Premium format, uh, I'm gonna match up the base. So these two, when they're sitting next to each other, the bases are together. So I think I did a gunmetal on hers, which was just a little bit of a darker uh, shade. And then here was more of a purplish, like, alien type of a rock that I'm going to follow on that one. So I just want to make sure they match up as close as possible because I want them to play next to each other. So what I'm going to do next is I'll uh, probably go into the garage. I'll chop up some of those symbols on the base, contact my friend, see if he could do me some etching, clean up the base a little bit, and then we're going to dive into all the paintwork. Okay, so I went over with some nail polish a little bit more to clean up some areas, but I think at this point I'm pressing my luck because uh, as I started doing this, I'm just checking it over. I'm looking at some areas, making sure everything's okay. And on the back of the base, when I use my flashlight like this, I see scratches. You know, I see little imperfections with the light, but when you take the light off from a bright light, you really don't see it. And then when you add a clear coat on top of it, that clear coat sort of hides a lot of those imperfections. As you can see, like when I first pulled it out of the box, the, the clear green looked amazing. So I think at this point, adding the yellow from Spaztec and then the clear coat will hide a lot of stuff. Like I said, there might be a little bit of green showing here and there, but it's not the end of the world. But what I did notice, when I first got this statue, inside here there was some cracking uh, from the peg. That's kind of be, to be expected. Clear resin, no matter which type of grade clear resin, whether it's crystal clear or soft or whatever, you're going to probably get cracking on it. That's just the nature of the beast. And because this is so heavy, if you lift this from here, if you grab these pieces here and lift it, 
all this weight will really help crack your base and mess it up. Uh, having the statue on it this way will, should be fine, but maybe over time this stuff could warp on you. I'm not really sure. That's if you have it in extreme temperature. So uh, going over with the light, I knew there was cracking in here. I did find a crack a little bit over here, nothing major. I did see a little one over here, nothing major. Over here, there was a little bit of a crack here. It looked like uh, maybe something hit this at one point. It must have been from the factory or something because it was uh, kind of there when I stripped it down because some of the clear green went in there. But it's nothing that's going to be like, oh my God, if I put Genesis on here, it's going to crack on a month. Um, this stuff is actually pretty durable. This is not like really bad clear resin. But I feel that this clear resin is actually not very friendly with uh, super cold temperatures. Like uh, this top part up here, you can use a blow dryer, just sort of heat it and reset it and it sort of kind of resets and that's fine. But I feel that if you guys have this statue or if anyone has it and you leave it in like your garage or an attic in extreme, extreme cold, that's where you might get this cracking because I feel like this clear resin doesn't like the cold. Uh, and I've never had this by the cold. It's been in my uh, collection case just sitting there all this time while I've been working on the main figure. So, like I said, I don't think this is going to go bad anytime soon. I don't think it's going to go fall over in time. But I think if you have a heavy statue on him and say you have a really hot house or you leave it in the sun, then yeah, maybe he might warp a little bit because this might start to give. Or if you have extreme cold and you kind of mess around with it and you kind of plop the base on the thing it might shatter on you so that's something I just got to keep in mind but like I said I don't think anything's going to happen to it like say six seven ten years down the line I still have them uh, something cracks or breaks or he starts warping I could always come up with something else to display him but for now I think it's going to be fine so my next step is uh, without you know cracking or handling it any more than I have to I'll probably go into the garage and what I might do is uh, sand this stuff down or I might just use some Aves and kind of just fill in the circles. Sand the circles down and give it a flat surface and then get some uh, stars uh, made up and just put the stars on each base, prime over it and then be done with that. Because like I said, I don't really want to mess with this clear resin too much. Uh, I want to not handle it as much as I can. So next step. I'm going to fill in these circles, I guess, just kind of get some A's, fill them in, let them kind of dry up, sand them down, get flat circles, put stars on, then we're going to prime it up with some clear primer, add all the clear yellows, and then uh, paint up the base, and then uh, pretty much done. So a uh, little green will show, but like I said, it's not the end of the world. If I feel that maybe some green areas are too potent, uh, Genis sort of has like that white glow in some of those areas so maybe I can add a little bit of white streaks in there too uh, kind of hide the greens and uh, kind of play with it a little bit so when we get to that we'll get to it but for right now it's just something to think about so just a word of advice if anyone has this Green Lantern don't let it sit in your garage or attic in the extreme cold you might run into issues when you go to grab it out of the box just uh, food for thought so let me start uh, filling in these circles and then uh, we'll sand them down uh, once they're cured up and add some more. Okay, we're going to start working on the Power Blast now because my friend etched me out the stars for the base. So I put the base on the side. I figured let me get those stars installed first before I start painting up just in case I mess anything up, you know, handling it. So I, better, I figured let's just work on the Power Blast for now. So the idea is really simple. We're going to do clear primer on top of the clear resin. It's all cleaned up, ready to go. Once we get this all pretty much primed up, which this primer goes on, it takes like 10 minutes for it to cure and dry. I'll let it sit for like a half hour. Then what I'll come back is we're gonna use this fast, that clear yellow on top of it. Now, I do know if you spray this yellow, like a lot of layers, it almost starts kind of clouding up and becomes more of like a goldish yellow. We want more of a brighter yellow. So, you know, I actually might just do one light coat on it and it might be where I want it, or I might have to add a little bit more of a second coat. We'll see how far I go. I don't want it to be too golden yellow. I want it to be like brighter yellow. So we'll see how this works out. And then once that's pretty much done, and then the next day after it cures up, so I usually like to let this stuff cure for a while. Uh, we have the Pale Gold from Alclad. I'll do the Nega Band just like I did the other Nega Bands. Uh, just kind of airbrush it in and go slow and sort of blend it into the Power Blast. And then once that's done, I'll look at the comic book art again because I know sometimes, you know, there's white in the middle of uh, some of the power blasts. So maybe I'll add some streaks of white. I'm not really sure. And I know all those little dots I added um, in the comic books, they uh, 
give it like sometimes some artists might give it other colors but I think most of the time it was like black like I said I want to try to follow the comic book art as much as I can but we'll see how it looks and then once this piece is all done it's dried and everything's where we want it to we do a final coat of the clear acrylic enamel and then the power blast will be done so like I said I'm trying to get ahead of the game get this done this week get the stars in the mail attach them to the base get them set up and I can finish painting up the base and then uh, pretty much Dennis will be done. So uh, we're moving along pretty fast now. Okay, so got the yellow on. Uh, I might add a little bit white, but that's when I do the base. Uh, so what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to add a little black on all those little circle pieces on there. So we got two comics here to kind of give you an idea what I was going for. So this is Avengers Forever. Uh, really great storyline. You guys should check it out. So you can see in his power blasts, uh, sometimes they would draw like, you know, like black in there. Um, further down in the comic, uh, some of his blasts sort of has stars on them. Uh, but we didn't go that route with it, so that's okay. This is from Avengers Forever. But if you go back to his classic um, uh, Legacy book, before he became Captain Marvel and he was Legacy, his power blast is sort of kind of what I was following here, like that. Uh, but of course not the black hand in there, but you, you get the general idea that they was little like, uh, you know, black circles, you know, I kind of like that look for it, kind of really makes it, uh, un unique in a way, instead of just adding like white and stuff. So, got some paint mixed up in here with a little yellow and black, I'm not going to try to do pure black on them, maybe just add a little of the yellow, see how it looks. And I'm just going to just do these little, little circle pieces that I put in around there, just to make that kind of different a little bit. And then, like I said, when I'm ready to start painting up the base, if I feel that I want to put any kind of yellow in the base or, I mean, a white, uh, you know, in here or over there, I might add it. But I don't think I will. It's, a, it's one of those things where I've got to see it all put together. And then if I feel it needs a little bit more, I will. But I don't really don't think I would really want to. But we'll see how things work out. So let's get this painted up. We can put this aside and we can go back to finishing up the base. Okay, so I was able to get into the garage the other day and chisel all these little uh, Green Lantern symbols out. And my friend in Canada, he's able to etch stuff, so he took pieces of wood and he etched out little Captain Marvel stars. So the idea is I'm going to sand these down, just put some Aves in there, and then get a little bit of a star in there. They're a little bit thicker than what I wanted, but sanding them down will work out fine. Now, the reason why you see all this black and uh, stuff up there is because... Uh, these are etched out in wood, and they are electrified, and when you do that with wood, you kind of, I guess, get like the sap and stuff sort of kind of leaks out a little bit, so it gets a little bit tacky, but some sandpaper will work out just fine. Um, ideally, what I sh would have liked to have done is rolled out a sheet of Aves and send that out to him, and then have him just etch out the Aves and then put those on, but with the lockdown and everything that's going on, the wood is fine. It's not the end of the world. Uh, it just needs a little sandpaper. So basically what I'm going to do is just get some sandpaper here, sand these down, you know, just kind of go like this. Just got to be careful you don't break the tips off. Uh, I think there was one of them or a few of them, some of the tips are broken off. But, uh, and it's also kind of almost like turned to charcoal in some areas. That's kind of like, you know, because they're really burnt up and they're so small. But it's okay, like I said. It doesn't matter if some of them are a little bit uh, broken off there because it kind of adds a little bit more to it that it looks like it's old. You know, we'll see how it works out. So uh, I'll get these sanded down and then what I'm going to do is just mix up some Aves and I'll put like a sheet of Aves in here. Just kind of just like, you know, just roll some red Aves in there. Nothing too crazy and take a star and just stick it on, stick it on and just go around and then it should work out just fine. Okay, so I am going to get ready to start painting up the base, and this way we can finish out this uh, custom. So, I got the stars on. It's the next day. The A's and everything cured up pretty well. 
Instead of going just straight primer onto the area, it's better to hit it with some uh, adhesion promoter. Uh, it's just basically like clear primer. Uh, it goes on really well. There's no issues with it. Uh, so I'll hit it with this first. That'll just make sure it gives it like a good bonding process. Uh, this stuff cures up in like 5-10 minutes anyway real quick. And then I'll hit it with the filler primer. And then what I'll do is I'll look over each star and see if I need to sand stuff down. If I got a little extra A's or anything caked up. Smooth it down. I'll also use a piece of paper to do it. Uh, so this way I don't get any great primer springing up here. But once that's done, I'll be coating the whole piece in adhesion promoter. Everything. The clear, the other top clear piece, and the base as well. And then uh, by the time that's done, we should be able to come back and we start painting the yellow. Once the yellow is done, we can finish off the base and then the custom's pretty much ready to go. Okay, so uh, this is looking great. I'm really happy with it. So what I did is I did my adhesion promoter first. I did a nice good coat on all the thing. I made sure my stars at the bottom were looking pretty good. Uh, made sure everything was sanded down. And uh, once that was done, I did the clear yellow from Spaztec from the can. Stuff goes on amazing. I love the way it blends. You really don't get a lot of speckling. You don't get a lot of dust, especially with the new airbrush booth I built. Uh, everything looks really nice and shiny. Now, you might not be able to see it too well because the filter in the back pulled in a lot of the overspray, but if you put a paper towel behind it, you can see that the yellow really, really pops. I really like it. Now, there might be a couple areas that green is showing in certain areas around there, but that's just the downside of getting something from a factory that already pretty much painted it and I stripped it down. So sometimes those clear, you know, colors will stain your clears, but for the majority of it, there's really very, very little like green areas that are messing with it. It's really looking pretty good. And even if there's a little extra colors here and there, it's not the end of the world. Now, looking at it now, I may add some white, you know, maybe some white streaks in some of this bottom area, but not up the top, maybe just at the bottom, you know, because, you know, uh, you figure as he's going, it's more yellow power. And then as it goes away, maybe the yellow turns into a white. So I might play with this later, but we'll see how that goes. I'll have to decide on that later on. I'm going to let this dry up for the night, day. Tonight, uh, I'm going to probably pop this top part off just to make sure that anything doesn't crack or stick, you know, because uh, I, I couldn't get this top piece that's magnetized to sort of set up on something to spray it. Everything I was trying to do, I would either break it or it would fall or whatever. So I said, let me just paint it on this piece and let it be done with it. It's going to be connected anyway, so it's fine. And I also feel that, you know, this piece going into the back might scrape up some of the paint. And then in here, it, if I spray this together with that clear and I put it in, I might never be able to pull out. It might, like, bond together. So whatever, I kind of just figured, let's just spray it this way. It looks fine the way it is. Um, so... I'm going to let this cure up for the day. I really don't want to rush this. I want it to look good. I want to take my time. Uh, so once this is cured up, I'm going to think about it a little bit. If I want to add any kind of white streaks or any kind of white uh, in there, maybe even some pearlized white at the bottom, uh, maybe just to give it a little bit of blend, maybe in some areas that have a little bit of green that maybe I could kind of play with a little bit down there just to kind of make it pop a little bit more. And then once that's done, maybe tomorrow or tonight, depending on how the day goes, we'll do my clear coat on this. The clear coat, once I get that clear coat on, I want to let it dry for about a day or two. Really let it dry before I start handling anything down here with the base. Uh, so, but all in all, it's looking great. I'm loving this. Uh, I'm really excited that I was able to get that green off and turn it into yellow. I think it's going to look really, really well. So once we get all this done... Uh, which is not much left. We're pretty much almost there. It's just now of figuring out with the white, then painting the base to match up Phyla, and then pretty much he's done. Okay, so uh, the clear coat of yellow went on perfect. Uh, what I did is I did just some white streaks around at the base here just to kind of 
make it pop a little bit more because when I put on the clear yellow, this sort of got dark and lost in here. Uh, I know once I paint up the bottom here, it'll pop a little bit more, but I figured by just adding some little white streaks around here with some white paint and then clear coating it yellow again, just makes it pop at the bottom a little bit, gives it more of a streaky flow, kind of forces it a little bit, which is kind of okay. Uh, so once that was done, I went in with my uh, clear coat uh, enamel from uh, Spaztec. I clear coated the whole piece. It's nice and shiny. Uh, it's just going to take about a day or two to really kind of cure up before I start messing with it. Now, next step is uh, just tedious work. What I'm going to do is going to mix up some surface primer from Vallejo with some of this paint here. This paint right here, hopefully there's enough in here. There should be. Um, if not, I can always mix up some more. This is just a bottle of paint that whenever I have extra paint from uh, stuff in my paint cup, I'll pour it into here every once in a while. And it's got this really kind of cool pearlized blue grayish metallic base coat. And it's good for doing like space rocks and stuff. So I did use this bottle on Philo Bale's base as well. So there definitely should be enough in here to do all these rocks. So what I'll be doing is with a paintbrush is I'll just go around the edge and I'll just do a nice little trim around here. So this way when I add my silly putty masking all over the yellow, I'll know exactly where my trim is and I can do these rocks. So but when I do the silly putty and before I actually paint this, I'm going to hit it again with the uh, Dupacolor Adhesive Promoter. So this way uh, any uh, paint that I paint on these rocks sticks pretty well. I want to make sure that, you know, this clear coat is beautiful, it really seals, but it also is sort of slick in a way. So uh, acrylic paints might not stick over time or they might bleed or whatever. So it's always good to add another coat of primer. Of course, you know, the ideal thing would be like to sand it down or, you know, maybe hit it with other primer. But this adhesion promoter should work fine on that. I've done it before in the past on a couple other projects and it was absolutely fine. Uh, and then after that, uh, once the rocks are done here, I'll pull off all the masking. And what I'll do is I'll hand paint these rocks that are in the energy, uh, you know, flow. And I'll try to match up these rocks to these with hand paint. I should be able to do it. And once those are done and everything's set up, I'll seal it. I'll do whatever I need to do. And then we can mask off all the rocks. And we can paint this base exactly like Philo Bale's base. And then uh, that will be it of the project. So we're going to move pretty fast on the bottom of this now once I'm ready to do all my stuff. And then uh, that will be it of the project. All right, so I got uh, the base all painted up. What I did is I had Philo Veil sitting here, and what I would do is I would go over to uh, the airbrush booth, and I would go back and forth making sure I was matching up the colors. So I got these rocks matched up as best as I could to her base. The last thing would be to paint up the bottom part like a black metallic like I did with hers. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to paint these rocks that are in the power trails, these little weird rocks that are kind of floating up with it. There's one over here. Uh, there's one actually hidden under here. So they're kind of sporadic around here. You want to make sure you match them and get them. Now, the problem is, is if I just take acrylic paint and I paint onto here, it's going to bleed at first because it's so smooth. Ideally, you would want to kind of scuff up the paint with some kind of 3M pad, but I'm afraid that these rocks are hard to see. I might actually scuff up the yellow where I don't want to. So to play it safe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the adhesion promoter and I'm going to spray it into a cup. And I got some old paint brushes here that I use for sculpting and painting and I throw them in a pile whenever they get really funky. So this time uh, when I use stuff like this, I can go here and I can do these rocks. So if, I, if I'm able to paint up this rock with this clear promoter here and I do this one and this one and then the paintbrush starts getting all caked up and dried, I could grab another brush and throw this one away. You can salvage these uh, paint brushes if you want to put them in acetone or if you want to put it in like a uh, nail polish remover and sometimes I do. Uh, other times they're so destroyed I just kind of throw them away. But I'm going to clear coat, uh, you know, get this adhesion promoter onto these rocks and then I'm going to use a paintbrush to sort of match up the same paints I did at the bottom here to these rocks up here. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll spray the Dupacolor Clear Gloss into a cup like this 
and then I'll coat that at the end to seal them up pretty well and then I'll do the satin varnish on top of it after like I did with the base uh, and that's pretty much it for the top and then once all that's done and these are dried up tomorrow I could actually just do the bottom and he will be pretty much finished Okay guys, so we're pretty much all done. I really wanted to set him up and just see how he looks. I'm loving the way he looks. It's looking really great. Uh, what I want to do now is go over him one more time. So off camera, I'm going to go over it, make sure I didn't miss anything, make sure nothing needs to be touched up, make sure I didn't like nick anything. Uh, just make sure everything is just ready, good to go. I just wanted to put him together now though, just to make sure I didn't actually bend this peg over time, make sure he actually goes into the base and just you know make sure everything is really fluid and it's good i'm really loving it it's definitely a holy grail for me and i'm liking the way it came out um now after he's all together and i'm seeing how he looks sometimes i like Jenis just to be like kind of in a flying pose without the power blast so you know if, if i ever decide to i can always just put in the other right hand and keep this kind of worked around it but if sometime down the line i feel like you know i really don't like the power blast and i just want two hands there I can always kind of like come back to this and maybe chop off something over here, touch it up, and just have the regular hand on there. So that's just kind of my personal preference because I feel that if I put the regular hand in now, you got this weird thing going around there and that might, you know, scrape up the hand or something. So I don't know. I'll see how things evolve down the line. But for right now, I like the way it's looking and I think it's really cool. It's just something that is not perfect for a change of hand, you know, because it's not really designed that way. But we'll see how things go. But I mean, as long as he fits in my display case next to Philo Vale, everything looks cool. Now that I finished him, though, now that I have Genesis and I have Philo Vale, it almost makes me want to see down the line now if I can find a cool statue where I could put a centerpiece into like a setup where I have Genesis on one side, Marvel in the center, the father, and then have a Philo Vale on the other side. So that might be another thing I might want to do way down the line. But I like Genesis as my favorite, File is second, and then Marv, it's just a preference. So, I'm going to do all my touch-ups, I'm going to go over it one more time, uh, and we'll come back in the photo studio setup so we can look at him better, we could do a 360, we could go over it all, and then I can also show some pictures with him next to File of Ale. Maybe what I'll do is also I'll get him in my display case setup so you guys can see where I'll have them displayed, and then we'll finish out the video that way. Okay, so here he is all finished up in the photo suit setup. Uh, I absolutely love it. I mean, this thing is a holy grail for me. This thing is just was so much fun to work on. I've always wanted a really cool one of a kind, you know, Genesis Fail in my collection. Uh, I'm really happy that I purchased this Green Lantern from Prime One. Uh, it really, really just fit perfect. Uh, it required a lot of work, but I think all the effort at the end just makes it really. Uh, really awesome i mean uh prime one's design for green lantern was great i really like what they came up with i like their design uh and i think it just worked out great for uh genesis i mean this is just uh i'm just floored with it uh once you know we'll kind of go over him a little bit i'll stop the uh, footage and we'll come back and i'll have him set up next to file his sister and it'll look pretty cool having them uh together and stuff so uh getting a little bit closer so you guys can see how it all came out uh, I really love that he's nice and shiny. He's got that Starfield look going on him. Uh, it's really popping out really cool. Feels like he stepped out of the comic book. Um, everything just worked out great. The colors are popping. Uh, the base, I'm just so glad that the base worked out too. You know, being able to take all that uh, green out, put the yellow, uh, you know, kind of match up everything with the bases for both of them. 
And like I said, I mean, if I ever come across another 1 4 scale that'll fit uh, Marvell, their father, that would be a really great centerpiece to have brother and sister and father all together. So that's why I tell everybody, you know, the hobby's great. There's a lot of great statues out there, so if they ever damage, or even if you like the way they look, and you want to convert it into another character, go for it. I mean, I mean, look what this one did. This one's just awesome. Uh, it's always fun to do your own stuff too, because you know, like uh, I a lot of I do a lot of my own personal stuff for my own collection. It helps clear your head whenever you just take some time out and do your own thing. Uh, you know, because when you do a lot of stuff for other people, uh, you kind of want to just step back and kind of have something for yourself. So. Don't be afraid to get out there in the hobby and, uh, you know, just uh, convert some statues or repaint them. There's nothing wrong with doing it. So, uh, other than that, there's really not much more to say about it. It just uh, really worked out pretty cool. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the camera real quick. I'm going to put on his uh, regular hand. Um, that regular hand actually worked out pretty well, uh, even the coming out to here but the only problem is is this sort of kind of bends into it and you might scratch the finger but let me stop the camera I'll put that hand in there because it still works out pretty well even though it's not connected to anything alright so this is what it looks like when the hand is just connected so I think it still works out pretty well it's not that it you know of course you had that little metal rod sitting there where it's supposed to go into the ring finger I understand that but I think it still works. I mean, it's not the end of the world. The only problem is that plastic sort of is bending into the finger and it might start scratching the finger over time. So that's the only thing that's kind of eh, a little bit tricky. Uh, but I mean, you know, if I ever just want to kind of display him without the uh, power blast, I can for a while. Then I can always put the power blast back in. But, you know, it worked out pretty well. The the rocks came out great. Uh, definitely matches a uh, phyla's uh, base and everything now. Uh, so I think it worked out. So I think uh, as of night now, well, let's see. It's kind of yeah. See, it's kind of bending into that finger right there, and that's a little bit tricky. Where over time it might make a little bit of mark. But then again, you know, he's got a star field. So if it scratches the paint a little bit, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it'll just look like a star. So I think I get away with it. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, both hands work out pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'll stop the camera. Uh, we'll get uh, Fala out of uh, the display case and we'll see what they look like uh, next to each other. Alright, so brother and sister are standing next to each other and the scale on them is perfect. I love the colors. I love the way they look. Uh, I love the way Genesis is floating a little bit higher than Phyla. It's kind of like that older brother look. They're both looking in the same direction like they're ready to go to battle with each other. It's going to make a great display in my case and I absolutely love it uh, I mean I couldn't have planned this any better and I love having this like you know nice one-of-a-kind uh, you know a little bit of collection one for scale uh, these just came out great even though Philo was painted a little bit different with different paints it still worked out uh, I matched up the bases as much as I could uh, Genesis has just got a little bit more of the power going with the clear resin of course Phyla you know with that Captain Morrow from Sideshow she didn't have any clear stuff but I think it works out pretty well. I think her clear probably would have been more blue anyway, if I'm not mistaken. But when she came into, you know, took over to Captain Marvel mantle there, uh, she was only in the blue and uh, red outfit for maybe a few issues. And then she went into the blue and white, uh, like when Genesis went into the blue and white. And then after that, Marvel just killed off all my favorite characters. And uh, she came back as Quasar. Uh, but then, then she went to another character. So I know she's in Guardians of the Galaxy now. I've seen her in uh, the mobile game March of Marvel Future Fight. Uh, and I know she's got a completely different look now with a sword. But I kind of like this, you know, version of the Marvel family. So now, if I ever find another character that I can put next to them with, uh, the, you know, Marvel, the father, the original Captain Marvel that would look like a really great setup so i'm going to keep an eye out down the line if i could ever find a one fourth scale that would fit that maybe could stand behind them uh i think it would look pretty sweet so that might be something down the line but marv i liked him but genesis is my favorite file is my second favorite so if i could get the whole family together it would look pretty cool um but there there you go so let me know what you guys think did you guys like the series did you like the end result uh you know, do you even know about these characters? You know, if you want, go out and check out some old Janice Vale books, uh, especially Avengers Forever storyline. It was a great uh, story as well. Uh, but I had a lot of fun. I'm really happy with this. So what I'm going to do is I'll get some pictures. I'll post up on Instagram. We'll get some stuff up there to show you guys what it's looking like. And then uh, I guess uh, down the line when I get my, uh, 
you know, TV room a little bit cleaned up. Maybe in a few weeks, I can actually take some pictures of them in my display case and just share them on Instagram with people just to show you guys my little uh, personal collection that's going on. I did clear out a lot of stuff and I'm just working on grails now. So this is another grail down. A lot more to come over hopefully within the next year or so. I can finish up some more characters and that's pretty much it. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching the series and I'll come up with some more. So thanks for watching.